So this is actually the video that I wanted to make uh, last week, and um, I couldn't. And I figured out the reason why was because that one video wanted to be three videos, actually. Because the whole subject is following your dreams and how to follow your dreams specifically. And I have this kind of like three-step process that I use now to when I'm following my dreams and deciding what to do, either which dream to choose or also, um, you know, which actions to take along the way. And this particular one is the third step in the process, and it's called follow the light. And it's not what you think. It's not about dying. It's definitely not about dying. It's kind of like me. It's how I choose to live to make my life a lot more fun and kind of exciting along the way. So if you're interested, stick around. I'm Michael Cole, and welcome to my world. Okay, so let's face it, uh, following your dreams is not always the most easy, easiest thing in life to do. Um, sometimes it's not even fun. Sometimes it's like we stop ourselves, we block ourselves, people tell us not to do it. It's just a pain in the butt. So, but I, I've come up with this kind of like three-step process that has really helped me out as I go forward, and it continues to help me out to make decisions about what I want to do, and hopefully make the decisions that are a lot more fun for me and playful, which I found is actually the biggest thing in doing this and creating anything you want, is to keep it playful, to keep it fun, and keep you engaged in wanting to move forward. So this particular step, this follow the light, is I think the most important step, the most important aspect of following your dreams, of going out to create the thing that you want. So uh, what we're going to do today is uh, let's just, so first of all, to kind of give you an overview of what's going to be going on, um, I'm just going to talk about the three-step process quickly. And uh, when I do, I'm going to explain a little bit about each particular step. But like I said before, is that each of these videos will focus in on a separate step. Um, and then f then what we'll do today is uh, I'll talk a little bit more about, a little bit more in depth about following the light and what I mean by that. And then I'm going to tell you about how kind of a lot of this started for me, which is on a trip to Mongolia uh, three years ago, and kind of how everything worked out there. And I was able to make a shift in my mind that uh, I continue to this day uh, to do. And then we'll talk a little bit more about some other things, and then uh, we'll be done. So, so first of all, let's let's talk about the the three step process, okay? And the three step process that I now use for following my dreams is choose, move, and follow the light. Okay, choose, move, and follow the light. Those are the three steps. Now, those are the three steps in kind of like the rough order that you do them in, in this whole process. But it's kind of funny because to me, uh, as I've looked at these and played with them, uh, the the they actually the order of importance is in reverse. So for me, follow the light is the most important aspect. Uh, move is the second most important, and then uh, choosing is the third. But let me tell you what each one of them mean, just so we kind of know what's going on. So the first one is probably pretty self-evident, choose. You have to choose a dream to actually go after, right? You have to know where it is you're headed, what you want to accomplish as it sits, you know, way out there. So that's, that's is your first step. You have to choose a dream. Um, sometimes you can have multiple projects going on, but if you have a primary thing that you're going after, it makes life a lot easier. Second thing is move. You, uh, you kind of have to move towards that goal, towards that place where you're going. You have to uh, take steps. You have to take actions almost each day, really. And um, it's not that you have to take action every day because that's the only way to get there. I found that it's always a mental thing because as long as I'm in movement each day towards it, I kind of feel like I'm not letting myself down. I feel like I'm getting things accomplished. I'm heading towards there, even if it's, even if it's just in small increments. So that's move, right? So choose choose your goal. Choose the, the dream that you want to go after. Make sure you've got that. And then move towards it each day. Now, the third one is follow the light. And maybe you've kind of already figured out what this is if you've watched any of my episodes lately. Because follow the light for me means 
is choosing a dream or choosing an action each day that makes me feel light instead of heavy. Okay. Now, the reason for that is, is because a lot of times I also talk about play. Um, the way that I now approach my life and especially following my dreams is in making it playful along the way so that each action that I take, I choose the thing that's more playful, uh, which is light. Now, for a lot of people, that word play can be a bad thing. It can carry a lot of baggage, right? Or fun or whatever it is, whatever else it is that you want. And, you know, and then also if you look at it, so well, first of all, it can carry a lot of baggage. So if you choose a word like light, it's going to be a lot easier. But there's another thing about light versus heavy that really helps out here. And that's because the opposite of fun is like not fun or the opposite of, you know, play is work. And those are kind of like you can't really feel those as much. So the concept of something that feels heavy, we all kind of understand that. We all have lived that, right? When we go into a job that we don't like, when we have to deal with a person that we don't particularly like or is a pain in the backside, it's you understand that. Now, how you use it here is that, let's say for a dream, you have a particular dream that you're thinking about, right? Or maybe you have a couple of different ones. It's very easy to sit there and figure out which one makes you feel a lot more excited to go after. Same thing in a day-to-day -day choice of what to do, um, even if it's not going for your dream. We get the choice in every moment, in every choice, to choose the thing that makes us feel lighter by doing it. Now, or, and then the opposite, of course, is when you choose something that makes you feel very heavy and you understand what that feels like. Now, if you're anything like me, I have, for the most part in my life, I always seem to choose the heavy stuff, right? Because from my youth, I've been told to, you know, you got to work hard, you got to do this, you got to do that. Everybody has ex expectations for you. Your parents say what you should do and shouldn't do. And so I tend to follow a lot of what everyone else says to do instead of what I'm saying to do inside my own heart and occasionally in my head. So I choose that heavy route. Now, the thing about that is, is I have found, and I'll tell you about it in the, the Mongolia story here, is that the more that you choose the lighter option, the more you choose the fun and the play, the more your entire being opens up and you start wanting to do the thing that you've wanted to do. It is playful. It is light. It makes you feel light. And that's an easy thing to tell. It's kind of a binary choice. It's a binary process. You either choose something that's going to make you feel heavy or something that's going to make you feel light. And this helps every single time. And why this is, is it, it's like an internal guidance system. I call it like inside of you. It's the easiest way to choose what to do in your life. And this goes for beyond just following your dream. It goes beyond choosing your dream. It goes beyond selecting each of the actions. It really is truly for me right now in my life, the ability to make those quick decisions that make me feel lighter every single time. And the thing is, every time that I have done that, it's amazing. It's like the world opens up. Because in addition to being like your own internal guidance system, as, as I like to call it, I, I believe that um, we all have, whether you want to call it the universe or God or your angels or whatever it happens to be, right? Your ancestors or people who have uh, passed on. I believe really strongly, because I've seen this time after time after time, that I am guided by something bigger than me, okay, in this life. And it's pretty amazing. I tend to think of it as the universe, just this universal energy of love. That's my way of looking at it. And um, it's like invariably, it's kind of funny. My wife and I will sit there and we kind of laugh at each other because we say, ah, let's do this particular thing. 
And then through a chain of events, all of a sudden, this like miracle happens at the end, right? Where we're given the thing that we want, even though we headed in a slightly different direction. And that's what happens with this, is that it's like tuning into your own maybe non-physical self, like your own consciousness, uh, universe, God, angels, guides, whatever it is. And it's like they whisper in the slightest of ways, but they usually whisper in a very loving way, which I think you can probably tell that that loving way is more like it makes you feel lighter each time you go rather than choosing heaviness. Now, in the beginning, I think when you first come to understand this concept, it's a lot easier when you're faced with a decision, whether, you know, what dream you want to pursue or what action you want to take specifically in this day. In the beginning phases, it's easier to identify, first of all, what feels heavy for you because we're kind of locked into that <laughs> very, very deeply. And so the more you can sit there and you say, okay, well, here's my two choices, let's say. And you know what? This, oh, this, this does not feel good. This does, I just don't like this feeling. And it's easier to identify that first because it's what you don't want. It's what you've been experiencing. And then from there, based on that, you can then choose the other thing or other few things that then makes you feel lighter. So it's kind of like a binary thing there where in the beginning you just focus on the heaviness, which you don't want to do that forever, because what you want to get to is to that point where you can then just simply, when faced with decisions, say, what makes me feel lighter? And the reason for focusing on heavy to begin with is because generally we don't want to do nice things for ourselves. We feel we don't deserve it. Uh, we feel we're never going to be able to get what we want. And so if you, in the beginning, start to focus on what makes me feel lighter, you're immediately going to trigger those beliefs and it's going to pull you back anyway. And then you're inside your head and gone. So first of all, kind of take a look at it as what feels heavy. And then from there, always move towards what feels lighter. Okay. Now, so let's Take all of that for kind of what it is. It's just a little bit of the background and that. So let me tell you about Mongolia. Okay. First off, Mongolia is an amazing country. If you've never been there, uh, I highly suggest going. It's kind of like a little bit of the Wild West out in the main parts of the country, uh, meaning there's there's no fencing, there's nothing, there's, you know, the land really isn't owned by people, it's owned by the government. And so it's just, it's a magic place. Now, um, I was there because I met my wife there uh, 11, 12 years ago, and uh, that's a whole other story. Great, amazing story. But we went back there to visit family, her family. And um, at the time, I had just finished a, uh, a third novel of mine in uh, this detective series, which I kind of had fun with it, and I kind of didn't, in a way. It was, it was an interesting thing. I loved the novels. I loved you know, finishing them, and I, I'm very proud of them. But it also made me feel heavy, right? And I, I couldn't identify that at the time, but all of that made me feel heavy. So when we got to Mongolia, my wife, again, yet again, being the smartest one of the family, kept reminding myself to have fun, play. We got out of our regular routine where I was writing all the time, and we went to Mongolia, and one of the nice things was, was that uh, every summer, uh, most all families in Mongolia have what are called gers, or yurts, as we know them here in the West, but the Mongolian word is ger. And it's those little, you know, they're made out of felt, it's like a felt tent, looks kind of like a marshmallow, white marshmallows kind of sitting everywhere. But they're put up in the summertime because they're covered with felt, which keeps out the heat and the sun. So it's relatively cool inside. You're able to roll up the edges just slightly so there's wind coming through there. But the most magical thing about these, these gears are is that they're set up on the ground and you put carpets on top of them, very colorful carpets, and then wall hangings around, which are just sometimes hand stitched with you know really vibrant colors. And it's just a magic place to be inside. 
So I still wanted to write, uh, but I asked if I could go out and use the the gear because you set it up next to the house. And uh, so, oh yeah, so I had my free time. I got to go inside the gear and I took my uh, laptop in there. And my main thing that I remembered was my wife saying, just have fun and play. And so what I ended up doing is, is I started writing a children's story, just a stupid, dumb, crazy, you know, little children's story, right? And I had a ball. It was just so much fun. And I didn't care if I made mistakes. I didn't care if it was stupid or not. I just did that. I mean, I just love children's stories. I love, that's kind of who I am a little bit. I'm a child, basically. So the more and more I did this story, and I think I started a couple of other ones, uh, it was just magic. It was as if a weight had lifted off of my shoulders. And did you catch that? It was a weight lifted off my shoulders because I could make the decision that made me feel lighter, that was more fun, that was playful for me. And everything started to change after that. We were there for a good month, month and a half, and uh, I just had a ball. Like each day, I couldn't wait to get out to the gear to do some writing. And in the meantime, too, you know, my wife and I, we also did some trips on the side. We had some fun and, and all of this, but it was just magic. And it was like something shifted in me at that point. And then when we got uh, home here, uh, I ended up uh, writing two children's novels, which I still haven't published yet. We're trying to figure out illustrations on it and everything like that. But I had a ball. It was like, again, even here, the weight had been lifted from me. And that's where I began to understand the power of this. And what ended up happening is, of course, you know, that decision to do that kind of in a way led to having fun with many other decisions, which then led to, you know, hey, what do you want to do? And finally coming to this channel and going, God, I've always wanted to present, you know, the knowledge that I have, things that I've learned in my life. So this path that I never could have thought of was made possible because I followed the light. I followed the action. I followed the dream that felt lighter to me, that made me feel gloriously lighter, made me feel free. And I've been doing that ever since. And um, it's really great because you can use this again for, for the dream that you want to go after, as well as each different action that you're going to take each day. And the thing is, I've found is because I tend to be a workaholic, I tend to be very focused on what it is I want. But for most of my life, I kind of haven't achieved a lot of the stuff that I've wanted. And I think it's because of this exact thing, or actually choose or disregarding following the light. Because I was always following what other people wanted, what I felt I should do what I feel, felt I must do. So in the end, everything kept closing in around me until I got to the point where I was just so down that we went to the, on the trip to Mongolia and I was finally able to, thanks to a lot of good people, remind me to have fun and follow the light. And it became magic. Now, here's the thing about all of this though. The difficulty is, this has not been a smooth journey because this, 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 this head up here is so stuck with all of those ideas for doing what other people want or for powering through and doing things like that. I, the most of the time, was still choosing the heaviness. Now, here's the thing. This is simply my method that I'm coming up with lately, okay? And this works... I found this has worked very magically, actually, in my life. But it's just one way. You f check out other people, see what's going on. I have a friend uh, who he he's going after his dream. And um, he powers through everything. He understands what he wants, and he just goes for it all the way, which is an equally legitimate way of going through things. He does 50 to 60 hours a week. He just keeps banging away at stuff. And I tried that a little bit myself, and that led to a bad place for me. 
So you're going to have to choose which way you want to approach things. I'm just merely presenting a possibility. But I can't tell you how powerful this has been in my life, even though it's been difficult retraining myself away from pushing very hard and always being in this heavy place. The lightness in my life now, uh, I'm having much less stress. Uh, I think I'm a little happier, although you'd have to ask my wife about that, but hopefully I think she would say I'm, I'm a lot happier doing it this way. Um, it makes decisions a lot more fun. I can't wait to do, like, doing these videos. I can't wait to do it. And it's, it's you know, it's just fun figuring these out along the way. It, it makes me feel one hell of a lot lighter to do all of this. But also in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, my wife and I have found, like I mentioned before, it's like, I'll reach for the easy light thing to do. And it's nearly a miracle how things just end up, we end up in the place that we want, many times not even expecting to get there and not even setting out to get to that specific place. And two, you'll find as you go along, uh, many times the, the, the decision presents itself to me this way, which is because I am a workaholic, I tend to be very focused, like I say, is that a lot of times this choosing lightness over heaviness simply means taking a day off once in a while or just having fun, going out for a walk, you know, lighting candles and having a dinner with my wife, you know, it's like things I wouldn't normally think of, but I'm, yes, I'm that bad. And, uh, but it's like, all of a sudden, this kind of opens up a whole different way of living life. And it's much, much better. And like I say, uh, the universe, I believe, is really leading me quickly to the things that I want right now. I can see it. It's like thing after thing after event after event. The more that I follow this method in my life, the easier my life gets. It's pretty phenomenal, to be honest with you. And the last thing about following the light in your life, and this is why this concept is so brilliant, because when you follow the light, when you choose that action or that option that makes you feel lighter, that makes you feel more excited and more playful, it's just that it ends up being, it keeps you in movement. It keeps you moving forward towards your goal which is the second step in the process, move. The only thing that will stop you in achieving your dream, in following your dream, is you, when you stop and you can no longer keep going. Now, in the next video on move, we'll get into all of that, but that's exactly what this is. This follow the light helps you to continue to move, helps you to want to move, each time. You can't sometimes wait to wake up. Sometimes I can't sleep at night. I'm thinking about things. I'm having fun in my head when I choose the light. So this will keep you in movement because the opposite of it, and I found this so many times, is that when I choose heaviness, when I make that choice to do the heavy thing, usually I don't want to continue it ever. And that's when I stop. And that's when the fear kicks in, and that's when everything pulls me down. And maybe you've felt that before. Maybe you understand that. So the more you choose to follow the light, the easier it's going to be to keep moving. The easier it's going to be, and the faster it'll be to get to that dream, that place that you want to be. And in the end, every day, when you're following your dream, when you're taking those actions, you are in that place of already living your dream because you're feeling the lightness, you're feeling the joy, and you just want it to continue forever. So for this week, try that. Try following the light in some small decisions along the way, in some major decisions along the way. Feel the heaviness and understand, mm, it's not where I want to go. What is my option where it's a little bit lighter and make that choice? Try it each day for a little bit. Each day, choosing the little bit lighter one 
on some little lesser decisions, perhaps, and see exactly what happens to you by the end of the week. My guess is, is you're going to be enjoying life a lot better. You may be achieving the things that you want a lot faster, and it's just going to be fun. More of that along the way. So hit the like button. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe, but come on back. And uh, honestly, follow the light this week. Follow the light, follow the light, follow, follow the light. As a tongue twister, it's really not. It's one of the best things you can do in your life. Anyways, love you. Thank you.